Today we are in the kitchen and we are going to have our kitchen bay, which is me, cook us up a fabulous meal. My whole goal for this entire cooking series is to show you, my busy hotties, how to create an amazing meal in a short period of time. If you like the idea of this cooking series, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already. We'll be happy to have you with us. Now, let's see what we're cooking up in the kitchen. All right, so today we are going to cook some yummy chicken pot pie and it is going to be the easiest recipe you will ever find, yet the tastiest. Now, I've seen chicken pot pie recipes and I'm like, girl, what were you thinking? But this one is gonna make you slap your grandma. Well, don't slap your grandma. All right, come on. First, we're going to start with our pie. You want a good size pot. You don't have to have a deep one, but you want something that's gonna be able to hold your roux. We're gonna start little and then we're gonna go big and we're gonna use butter. Don't put any margarine in my chicken pot pie. Now, if you're vegan or vegetarian, you can also modify this recipe to your taste, but I'm gonna challenge you to go big and bold and, and use your palate so that you can learn how to season food to your liking. And we're not gonna worry about measuring anything. We're gonna go off taste and sight, okay? All right, so we're gonna get our butter. We're gonna turn this stove on. Get it on about yeah, six or seven, so medium to medium high. And we're gonna put our butter in here. I'm gonna start with about half a stick of butter. This is a funny shape one. I know some of the other ones are long, but we're gonna start with half a stick. That's four tablespoons. Now, I don't measure nothing, but I'm gonna help you out on this one, okay? Get a butter knife, because that's what it's for. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna let that melt a little bit. Next, we have our onion and celery. We're gonna saute these in the butter, okay? I'm gonna start with my onions. Now, to make this easy, I, I tell you guys, I love shortcuts. I am the queen of shortcuts. You can call me the hot shortcut diva, whatever you wanna call me. Like to chop up onions and I don't know anybody who does unless you got a sous chef working in your kitchen at home then high five good for you I don't I got kids I don't want them messing with a knife and I don't have time for one so I get everything pre-cut that I can this is a cup of onion which is basically a whole onion it was $1.99 so you do the math it's a little bit more expensive if you're on a budget go ahead and cut the onion up I just don't want to same thing with the celery I don't want the extra celery left over and I'm probably not gonna put it in a Tupperware so I buy it pre-cut from my grocery store it's usually over by the salads and whatnot the peas and diced carrots again who wants to sit there and dice carrots and go through peas and drain them and all that stuff get the frozen kind it'll save you money and time all right so while our butter is getting yummy and melting one thing that I didn't put on my ingredient list that you guys may have seen already is olive oil. I'm going to add a little olive oil to this mix. And this is where you can start substituting for my vegetarian and vegan friends, okay? So I'm just add a little drizzle of olive oil. I like cooking with olive oil. For one, you can cook at high temperatures, but it also has its own robust flavor. And you'll figure that out when we start building a roux. Anytime you start building a roux or a sauce, you want flavor, you want spices. Now, speaking of spices, there are only a few spices that I'm actually going to use with this particular meal. Now, normally, if you follow me on Snapchat where we do a dinner snap, I usually have a whole host of spices because spice is life. Don't ever forget that. And you, it's trademarked, registered, whatever you want to call it. Spice is life, yes. But today, it's all about the butter, the little bit of olive oil, and the onion and celery. Our star is going to be this poultry seasoning. If you don't have poultry seasoning, girlfriend, boyfriend, get some. Because anytime you're cooking chicken or dressing, especially dressing, dressing, <laughs> dressing, <laughs> we are in the middle of the holiday season, you have to have poultry seasoning. Okay? And then a little thyme. And then we have just literally a splash of garlic powder and then also some onion powder and salt and pepper. That's pretty much it. You don't want to over season this. 
All right, so now our butter looks nice and yummy. And this is the fun part. We're just gonna put our onions in here, let them caramelize, yes! Lots of onion. I used about half a cup for those that are so analytical and you know, you got the CPA in you. It's half, about half a cup, okay? Now I'm going to put about a half a cup of celery, maybe a little bit less. That's good. So we used about a third of a cup of celery. This needs to cook down a little bit. With the butter and the olive oil. All right, so while that's cooking, I'm gonna take you over here to this chicken. This is the best and biggest shortcut for this recipe. This is a rotisserie chicken. It is not um, flavored, it's not the lemon pepper, it's not the rosemary, it's not the barbecue, it's just the regular traditional rotisserie chicken and that's all you need. You just need one and this will cover a really big pot of chicken pot pie. I'm just gonna take this, I'm gonna take all the skin off, we're gonna get in here and get nasty and normally I would shred chicken. I use rotisserie chickens a lot, normally I would shred it up, but today I'm gonna chop it up Chop it up. What's that song? Hey, hey. Yeah. Anyway, so that's what we're going to do. I'm going to take this little guy out. Put him on my cutting board. Now this juice, we're going to keep this juice because it's going to go in our roux. All right? This is fun. If you have kids that you trust, this would be a fun job for them. I don't really trust my kids like that. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm just going to get in here. Be careful of the bones. Make sure you don't have any of the bones that usually lie in this little area. If you're vegetarian, obviously you're gonna skip this part. And you're going to use a vegetable broth instead of chicken broth in your recipe. Now, I, I can't speak to how flavorful that will be, but you'll get a part of what we're doing. Maybe you can add some poultry season to your mix too, even if you're a vegetarian. The reason I like the rotisserie chicken is because you're getting all that flavor that's been cooked on that rotisserie and it's like, it's undeniable, like it's so yummy. It really tastes good. They do a really good job with, um, you know, putting, getting these chickens cooked. All right, so that's enough. I don't need to play with this guy anymore. He already feels violated, bless his little heart. Okay, so I'm just gonna situate this on my cutting board. Now, as far as cutting boards are concerned, you wanna have two to three separate cutting boards. You wanna use one for meat, one for vegetables and like a kind of utility cutting board. This one is more of a utility cutting board. I kind of use whatever. The reason it doesn't matter about this one going on my, um, my meat cutting board is because this is already a cooked chicken. I'm very funny about putting, you know, poultry and porks and beefs and all that stuff on your vegetable cutting boards because the juices will seep into the wood or to the bamboo or whatever it is that you're using and you can actually get sick later on no matter how much you clean it. You should always keep them separate. But this is already cooked so we don't have to worry about that. I'll give it a good scrub and it'll be fine. All right, I'm gonna check on my lettuce, I mean my celery and onion <laughs> as I rinse my hands off. Go back over here. Oh yeah, look at this. This is looking real good. Now see how the color opens up with the celery? It turns really bright, almost like a chartreuse color. And that's what you want to see. All right, so now I'm going to start with my juice here from my chicken, my rotisserie. And I'm going to pour this in the pot.
Oh my God, that smells so good. <sighs> that smells amazing. I'm gonna take my chicken broth. I'm gonna rinse the top off, very important. Always rinse the tops off of any cans that you open, anything that's going on the can opener, it needs to be rinsed off. I actually like to just kind of give the whole thing a little rinse. The reason for that, these cans are stored probably in places that you're not imagining. And you probably don't imagine that certain things are on top of them. So you just want to rinse them off. And just in case there's a little dribble on the side, I don't have to worry about it contaminating my food. Okay, so I'm gonna start with a little. You have to, building a roux, you have to do this in layers. So, I can't tell you how much of a can that is, <laughs> but you can see in the pot what that looks like. I'm gonna bring this to a boil again. And once it comes to a boil, like it's coming to a boil now, come on over so you can see what it looks like. <laughs> so this is what it looks like here. And now we're gonna take our flour. We're not gonna dump all of this. We have to do this in layers. I like pouring it out the bag, but it's prettier in the glass, so I'm gonna do it this way for you guys. The flour is how we're gonna thicken it and build it. Thicken it, thicken it up. <laughs> so that's it, just start there. And we're gonna stir it in. All right, now it's time to add more chicken broth. Oh yeah, you see how that's coming together? Now I'm gonna get my seasoning. Cause we're gonna keep layering this, but I need to season it now. This is my poultry season. I'm gonna reduce the heat just a little bit. I'm gonna get a little heavy handed. And then we're gonna go with a little thyme. Whoops. Not so heavy handed. We're gonna take a little salt. Just a couple little turns. Again, not so heavy handed. And a little pepper. I'm gonna add a little bit more chicken broth. Okay. See how that's thickening up? Now, while that's good, I'm gonna let that cook for a little bit. I reduce the heat, I'm gonna let it cook, and while that's doing that, I'm going to come chop my chicken. but I do need this knife. And I'm literally, just be careful with the knife. I'm not asking you to be, you know, Emerald Lagasse or somebody. I'm just gonna go down like this. This is what I mean by chopping it. Doesn't have to be perfect. And I'm gonna go back the other way. Uh-oh, I hear the bone. Where's our bone? Do, 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 do. Maybe it wasn't a bone. Let's go back on it again. Okay, no bone. Doesn't have to be anything fancy. You just don't have to shred it. Okay, so now that that's done, get 
give this a stir. The idea with this is to allow the seasoning and everything to kind of gel together and let that seasoning penetrate everything that's in this pot. So the onion, the celery, the, the thyme, the poultry seasoning, obviously the juice from the rotisserie chicken, the broth, that all needs to marry itself. So I'm gonna let that sit for a little bit longer, reduce the heat to about three. And while I'm doing that, I'm gonna take my potato, which I forgot to tell you guys, we're gonna add a potato. You don't have to add the potato, but if you are vegetarian, vegan, you definitely wanna add the potatoes, okay? So I'm gonna wash this off um, and then cut it up and throw it in my pot. Now I'm going to get my vegetable cutting board and this little knife here. Normally I would be doing this much more dangerously. To do that on camera. All right. I'm gonna rinse this little guy off again. And now you see why I rinsed the outside of the potato because it was in my hand. It's on the cutting board. You know, you don't want what's on the outside of the potato on your actual potato that you're using. Okay, all right, so now I'm just going to cut this guy up into medium-sized chunks, I would say. Not small, not big, shmedium. Shmedium, yeah. Sh All right, now that our potato is cut up, we're going to put it over into the middle of our roux so that the potatoes can cook, All right? Don't scrape your scans in there. Move that around. I'll move these babies in just like that. And now we will turn the heat back up. Turn it up to about a six. We're just gonna let this cook. I'm gonna add a little bit more chicken stock at this point. The roux that we have in here right now and the chicken stock that I just added, we're going to allow that to cook our potatoes. That's why I wanted to wait a little bit before I put them in instead of cooking them because then they'll start frying. We don't want fried potatoes. We want them to be nice and soft. So when you bite into that yummy chicken pot pie, it's going to blend in with all the other textures. We don't want crunchy chicken pot pie. The only thing we want crunchy on a pot pie is the crust, okay? All right. Be sure to preheat your oven to 425 because the pastries that we are using, which are the quintessential shortcut for this recipe, trust me, you do not wanna be making crust if you don't have to. I did find these yummy pastry cups they're called puff pastry shells and they are by Pepperidge Farm. And I have to tell you, as somebody who loves the kitchen, I love to cook and I can make crust from scratch. This is hands down the best pre-made pastry shells that I've ever had in my life. I'm not just saying that, I really mean it. These are going to save you time and this is gonna make everybody in your family, whoever's eating it, very, very happy. Mm-mm. This smells good. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. All right, I'm going to add some more chicken broth. Finish off our can. I'm going to stir this in. A 
At this point, it's okay to start tasting what your roux tastes like. That's how you're gonna build it. If you do everything without tasting it, that opens up a door for problems until you've perfected your recipe. You don't wanna move along without tasting it. So since we're tasting stuff, go on and pull this little tasting spoon out and see what we're working with. Mmm, that looks yummy. <laughs> now that our potatoes are nice and tender, I'm going to go ahead and add the carrots and peas. Now, if you're using the frozen ones like I am here, just let them sit out while you're cooking the rest of it. That'll be enough time to kind of thaw just enough because what you don't want is for them to be completely frozen and then throwing them into your pot. You do need to expect that because they are frozen, they're going to add water to your roux, which is why I'm perfectly fine with the thickness and the consistency of it right now because when I add these, it's going to add a little bit more water. I'm just going to open these. I'm gonna use nowhere near this whole bag. It's probably gonna be more like a third, I'd imagine. You don't want too many unless you're doing this as a vegetarian. I'm gonna add a little bit more. Just hoping to get more carrots, guys. Okay. Put that off to the side. This is good. If you want, you can actually add more chicken broth or you can simply move right on over to the heavy whooping cream. This is our fattening ingredient along with the butter. You don't have to use this. You can use a little milk. You can use, like I said, more chicken broth. You can actually even substitute for a little bit of olive oil. But if you want some homegrown Southern comfort food, go for the heavy whipping cream. I told y'all I don't measure anything, so we're just gonna go by sight. Now that I see my bubbles popping up here, that means my temperature has gotten back to where it was and it's time to go ahead and pour this in slowly. Ooh, look at that. Oh my gosh. That's literally about a third of my little half pint. The consistency of our pot pie, this is now the base. This is now our full Monty. We're about to add the chicken in. The consistency is nice and thick. Seriously, if you don't want it this thick, we can go ahead and add some more chicken broth or you can add a little bit more cream. I would personally add chicken broth at this point now that I've already put the cream in. So I think I'm gonna grab another can and pour about I would say a fourth of a cup in, and if I want more, then I'll add more from there. It's always easier to add more, but you can't take it away, unless you're a pro, and you have to know how to fix it. I added about a fourth of a cup more chicken broth, and that's simply because now I'm about to add the chicken, and I don't want it to be so thick that it's like a rock. We need it to be a little bit loose so it can ooze, and it can be more of the consistency of a nice, hearty, uh, soup-ish. Not really, because we still want it thick, but you don't want it too thick to where you can cut it with a knife. Now we're going to go over here and grab our chicken since it's already cubed and cut. And this is the fun part because we get to put the chicken in the pan. Don't knock your pan over. <laughs> Stir this in. Look at those big chunks of meat. Now you can make them smaller if you want, but I think the chicken sometimes is the best part of chicken pot pie. After all, it is called chicken pot pie. And a few more chunks. Mm. 
Oh, this is gonna be good. Now, along the way, you should have been tasting your roux, which has now turned into the actual pot pie filling. I'm going to taste what we got going on. I've made this a few times before, so I'm pretty sure what we have, but I'm just kind of hungry to be honest, and I just really want to taste it. Poor Jeff is back there, like seriously. <laughs> I don't get to taste any. Oh my God. Yeah, it's Tony to done it again. Hey, 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 hey. All right. That's two spoons in the sink. All right. So now that everything that we're going to put in our pot pie is all mixed together. Look at this. This is so beautiful. I honestly would have liked a few more carrots. I'm sure my little guy is going to be glad that there are not many carrots in here, but I'm good with this. This looks amazing and I cannot wait to eat this. Okay, we're gonna let that sit. While that's marrying itself together, we are now going to get our pastries out, put them on the pan, and pop them into the oven. They only need to cook about 18 to 20 minutes. You can actually eyeball them and tell when they're ready. They're beautiful little pastries. I just, I, like, when you make this dish, you are going to feel like you are really a gourmet chef, and it's probably going to inspire you to get in the kitchen and experiment more. I promise you, if you like cooking, this is going to help launch you into a new space. Let's get the pastries. So I'm going to open these guys up. They're already pre-cut, pre-diced and everything. Now you're probably trying to imagine how these are going to look they're going to be beautiful. They're gonna look just like on that box. So we're gonna take this, put this in the oven on the middle rack. Don't burn yourself. And we're gonna let it cook for about 20 minutes. pastries are finally ready. They're nice and brown. Now I'm using these silicone mitts to take them out. I let them cook a little bit longer because I like mine to be a bit more golden brown because that means they're a little bit more crunchy, but you don't want to overcook them because you don't want to burn. See how beautiful these are? We're going to sit these over here. With pastries, you want to sit them on a wire rack when you take them out. So you don't have to touch these like I'm about to. My hands are called cooking fingers. They've already been burnt to death, so we're just gonna do that. They're hot. We're gonna let these rest for about five minutes. Our filling is all done. Everything looks nice and beautiful. The only thing I honestly regret is not having enough carrots and just for you know aesthetic purposes not necessarily for taste because it tastes phenomenal i mean it tastes amazing and i can't wait to put it in those little pastry cups so we're just going to move this whole thing over just so i can have a good workspace i want to make sure that's had enough time to rest because you don't want it to start falling apart when you're trying to work with it your little cups here, they're already perforated around, so you're gonna be able to take a little butter knife and simply kind of edge around it because we're gonna pick these up, these little tops. I'm gonna move these into the bowls first because, well, you'll see the presentation and what that looks like after. But right now, we're gonna let these cool for about another minute or so and then we'll fill it. <laughs> Y'all like my new shoes? We can put these on a look of the day. <laughs> Let's go ahead and loosen the little tops up. Like you can't, you can't like, I, to make this from scratch, child, you'll be in the kitchen all day. Thank you, Pepperidge Farm. 
these are just beautiful. I have some recipes for desserts with these as well and they just like the bomb. This little guy's already fallen, so he's good. Pop you out. And boom. Okay, so now I'm going to place these in the bowls. We're going to do three in a bowl. If you have a little person that's not quite a man or a woman yet, two will be more than enough. Trust me when I say that. Now, because I like this so much, I got my big fancy gold spoon out. <laughs> and we're gonna use the spoon to uh, fill our cups. Oh my goodness. Now it's time to put our little crust on top. It's time for the moment of truth. I'm about to dig into this, but before I do that, I hope you guys have thoroughly enjoyed this cooking session with the Kitchen Bay. That's me, Miss Tony. <laughs> and I hope that you'll tune in again. Don't forget to leave me any comments or questions about this recipe or any others in the comment section down below. And of course, if you like this video, you have to hit the like button so that I'll know to continue doing this series. Other than that, if you haven't subscribed, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. We'd love to have you join us. I'll see you guys next time. I wish you could come eat with me, but you'll have to make it on your own. I'm a dork.